Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about virtualizing network devices. And the first thing that I want to cover here is how networking works on type one hypervisors like VMware, vSphere, ESX. So it was the type one hypervisors we were talking about in the last lecture. Before I show you how it works and those, a quick recap of how switched networking works in traditional networks. So in the example here, we've got a switch, which has got two servers plugged into it. The servers here are not virtualized. These are bare metal servers. A bare metal server means a server where the operating system is running directly on the hardware. It's not running a hypervisor. So we got server one in VLAN 20 with IP address 10.10.20.10. .10 and we've got server two running another application that's in VLAN 30. IP address 10.10.30.10. .10. On the switch, we configure the physical port connected to server one as an access port in VLAN 20. The physical port connected to server two is an access port in VLAN 30. So right now we've got the layer two setup done, but if we wanted those two servers to be able to communicate with each other, they're in different layer three subnets. So we would need a router for that. So let's add a router. This is a simple router on a stick configuration. So we've got interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1.20, IP address 10.10.20.1. .10 it's the default gateway for server one. And the other sub interface at gig 0 slash 1.30, IP address 10.10.30.1 .10 is the default gateway for server two. And now those two servers are able to communicate with each other. So you already know how that works on traditional switch networks. Let's see how things work when we've got multiple virtual machines running on top of a virtualized host. So the blue box here is a single physical host, and we've got two virtual machines running on there. It's the same as the servers we had in the last slide, but we've got them running as virtual machines now. So we've got virtual machine one, the same VLAN 20, IP address 10.10.20.10, .10 .10 .10, and virtual machine two in VLAN 30, IP address 10.10.30.10. .10. We're also gonna need an IP address on the host, on the underlying server hardware itself as well, to be able to manage that with our hypervisor software. So for that, we've got a management IP address on there, 10.10.10.10, .10 and that's in VLAN 10. Now, the problem that we have is, in the example here, that one physical box is connected up to the switch, the physical switch, with a single cable. So when traffic goes down to that host, how does it know whether to send that to the management IP address, the virtual, ma virtual machine one or virtual machine two, and they're in different VLANs. So how is the VLAN going to work as well? Well, the way that it works is it uses a virtual switch. So you see the switch up at the top, that's actually a physical switch outside the box that the box is connected to with a physical cable. The switch that is highlighted in red is a switch that is running in software. So it's not an actual physical thing. We connect the physical port on the host up to the physical switch and we configure that as a trunk port. So before we had access ports that were connected to our individual servers. Now traffic is going to multiple different virtual servers that are in different VLANs. So we need to configure that as a trunk port. And whenever traffic is getting sent down to virtual machine one, it will be tagged as VLAN 20. When it goes down to virtual machine two, it'll be tagged as VLAN 30. When it's for management, it will be tagged as VLAN 10. When the traffic comes in to the virtual host, it looks at the tag and based on the tag, it knows where to send the traffic. So right now that is all layer two information. 
traffic can get down to our virtual machines. We don't have any layer three configuration here yet. So the virtual machines won't be able to communicate with each other. If we wanted to do that, we could do the same as we did in the previous slide. We're upstream, we've got a router and it's acting as the default gateway for the three different IP subnets. Now with the virtual switch that you see here that is highlighted in red that is running in software, if it's in VMware, they're going to now be using their own native software for that. There used to be support for a Cisco software product, which was the Nexus 1000V, which was a software switch. So again, you couldn't buy this as a physical thing. It was software that you installed in your VMware environment, and that replaced their native switch. The Nexus 1000V is still supported in Microsoft Hyper-V, but support has gone for it in VMware now. So the example here, you see how it's working for the networking for our Type 1 hypervisor. Next thing that we're going to look at is, if I go back a slide, this is fine if you're running this in your own data center. But let's say that these virtual machines now are being run in a cloud environment and you want to have your own router to control the routing between them. You don't need to do that because when you do deploy this in a cloud environment, the routing can be taken care of for you by the cloud service provider. But maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want to implement some advanced routing features and you need to use your own router. Well, they're not gonna let you put a physical router in their facility. So what you can do instead is you can use a virtual router. The virtual router runs as a virtual machine itself. So now what we've got with that big blue box that you see here again is one physical box. On that physical host, we are running virtual machine one, IP address 10.10.20.10, .10 .10, virtual machine two, 10.10.20.10, .10 .10, and then we run another virtual machine, which is not running Windows, it's not running Linux, it's running routing software, like the Cisco CSR 1000V, and it can route between those different virtual machines. If you're looking at this, by the way, and thinking, well, what about if I've got virtual machines running on another physical host on another box? Yes, you can do that as well, and you can still have your layer two and your layer three connectivity between different physical boxes and still run all of your devices as virtual machines. Okay, so that was layer two and layer three and our different options on a type one hypervisor. Next, let's look at some other types of virtualization we can do for network devices. First one is looking at virtualizing our firewalls. Cisco have got a firewall called the ASA, it's the Adaptive Security Appliance, and it supports being virtualized. The big blue box that you see here is a single physical box, and to virtualize that, what we can do is we can create separate security contexts. So the admin context has got global administrative configuration. We configure a customer one context, which has got customer one's configuration, and we configure a customer two context, which has got customer two's configuration. Customer one, their traffic is going through on interfaces gigabit zero slash one and gig zero slash two. Customer two's traffic is going through interfaces gigabit ethernet zero slash three and zero slash four. The different interfaces are dedicated to the different contexts. Now, when you do it like this, those two contexts act and behave as if they're two completely separate physical firewalls. And you could also give the customers access to manage their own devices. Because we've got separate configurations, you could have administrators for customer one, could SSH into the customer one context and configure it. Administrators for customer two, you could allow them to do their own configuration they could SSH into the customer two context and do their configuration. The two sets of administrators would not even know that another context existed on that same physical box. They appear to be separate physical firewalls and that's how they act. The benefit that we get from doing this is it can save money because we just buy one firewall rather than buying two physical firewalls. And if you wanted to have redundancy, 
well, if you weren't using virtualization, you would need two firewalls for customer A and two firewalls for customer B. But using virtualization, we can just buy two firewalls and that gives us redundancy for both customer A and customer B as well. Okay, so that was our firewall virtualization. You can do this type of virtualization on routers as well, but only on the really high-end service provider routers. What you'll find support for on your normal enterprise level routers is VRF. VRF stands for Virtual Routing and Forwarding. And you can see here, we've got a single physical router and we can have separate routing tables on there for different customers or different departments. So the example here, we've got customer one and whenever routes come in on interface gigabit ethernet zero slash one, we know that they go into the customer one routing table. Whenever routes come in on interface gigabit ethernet zero slash three, that goes into the customer two routing table. Now with the example here, you couldn't give the customer's own administrators access to the router to configure it because there's a single configuration. So when you're in that configuration, you can see information for both customer one and customer two as well. So really it has to be just the service provider that or, or the, the higher level of hierarchy that has access to this. So previous example, they've got their own configurations. You can give them access with VRFs. There's just one configuration. So you can't give them access to that. Where you'll most often see VRFs being used is for MPLS layer three VPNs. Going back to our MPLS example from the earlier section, we've got the service provider network here. They've got PEs in New York and Boston. We provision a uh, layer three VPN for customer A and you see the interfaces that customer A are connected in on, we assign those to VRF customer A. So whenever a customer route is received on that interface, we know it's for customer A and we can send it to the customer A router on the other side. We also have customer B who are connected into the same physical routers as well. We assign those interfaces to VRF customer B. So whenever a customer B route comes in, it goes into the customer B routing table and it will be advertised to the customer B router on the other side. By having separate routing tables, separate VRFs for customer A and customer B, that keeps them separate and it makes sure that we never have routes being mingled with each other, which would obviously be a security issue. Okay, so to summarize virtualization, it supports running multiple virtual systems on a single physical system. This provides flexibility and it reduces costs. If you were wondering about redundancy, because you that could be a concern, you may be thinking, well, wait a minute, I've got multiple virtual machines running on one single physical box. What happens if that physical box blows up? I've lost all my virtual machines. Well, you can still support redundancy as well. In fact, redundancy is often easier to implement in a virtualized environment than when you're using dedicated physical appliances. So redundancy is supported by adding multiple physical systems, which each have virtual systems running on them. And typically it's very easy to move the virtual machines from one underlying physical box to another one. So if you have a physical failure, you just move your virtual machines to another box, you can automate that and you can be up and running very quickly. Okay, so that's virtualization done. I just want to mention one other thing while we're here as well, which is about clustering. And clustering is kind of like the opposite of virtualization. If we look back at virtualization, virtualization supports running multiple virtual systems on a single physical system. Clustering is the other way around. Clustering supports combining multiple physical systems into a single virtual system. And you can see here, we're doing that with our ASA firewalls again, where we've got four physical ASA firewalls, but we can configure them so that they operate like they're one single firewall. The reason you would do that is for redundancy. If any one of the four fails, the other three keep operating, traffic keeps going through. It also increases performance as well, because now we've got four times the throughput that we would have if we just had the one firewall. Okay, that is it for virtualization. See you in the next lecture, where we'll get more into the cloud computing again. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad-free, 
right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.